everybody. Today we're going to discuss using heart devices with SCADA software. I'm Lucy Chen. I'm the inside sales engineer at ICP-DAS USA and Robert Morrell from our technical support department is with us today. Later in the training he will use a demonstration. He will be doing a demonstration of heart devices with SCADA software. So here's our agenda. We'll first give you an introduction of the widely used heart communication protocol and then some of our heart gateways, followed by some easy to use Modbus converters and then we'll show you how interoperable the heart devices are and last but not least we'll demonstrate how to use heart devices with SCADA software to help users monitor real-time status. If you have any questions at any time, please enter them into our chat box. iSpeed DAS was established in 1993. Our headquarters is located in Sinchu, Taiwan. iSpeedAS USA was launched in 2001 to support the North and South American markets. We have over 200 R&D engineers. We work closely with them to add new features to our products, develop new products, and to support our customers. Most of our products are Rojas compliant, which means they are lead free. We have our ISO 9001 certification, which ensures we meet product statutory and regulatory requirements. HART, which is high, Highway Addressable Remote Transducer Protocol, is a popular communication protocol in industrial automation, process control, applications, factor, uh, factory or plant automation, etc. Um, HART was introduced in the late 1980s by Rosemount and has now become one of the largest communication protocols with more than 30 million heart devices worldwide. It helps with data communication between industrial systems and smart devices. Usually, current industrial control and monitoring systems communicate over 4 to 20 milliamps analog wiring, and heart protocol can send receive data over the 4 to 20 milliamps analog wires and communicate the data over digital signals as well, which can be read by all smart field devices. That is why heart protocol is so popular, and it is the best solution to upgrade existing plant applications to be able to work with smart devices. The HARP protocol can work under two modes. The first mode is point-to-point -point or um, analog-to-digital mode. The point-to-point -point mode or analog-to-digital mode refers to the process that data can be transmitted over both 4 to 20 milliamp analog wires and digital networks. The HARP protocol utilizes the Bell 202 frequency shift keying, uh, standard to super emboss, uh, superimpose digital communication signals at a low level on top of the 4 to 20 milliamps. Since the heart protocol is a master-slave protocol, it supports when a master device like host PC, PLCs, talk to a slave device like the smart field devices. Under this mode, both 4 to 20 milliamp current and the digital signals are output values from the heart protocol. Users can spec uh, specify which signals is the 4 to 20 milliamp and the other signal is sent, uh, is sent digitally. For example, currents from voltages can be sent as 4 to 20 milliamps indicating the various changing values of current and voltage. Heart protocol can also work uh, on another mode, the multi-drop mode, where only digital signals are used and the analog is fixed at a 4 milliamps. So HARP protocol is very easy to use and configure. It is a global standard for digital information communication across analog wiring between smart field devices and control and monitoring systems. It provides easy access to various information, including measuring variables, pressure level, temperatures, etc. Since it is compatible with traditional standard 4 to 20 milliamp wires, it is widely used to upgrade your existing old wiring systems to fit into the new industrial Internet of Things era. HART is also a risk-free solution for highly accurate and robust data communication. It can increase plant availability, reduce maintenance costs, and improve regulatory compliance. Another advantage is that HART is easily converted to Modbus RTU, 
Modbus TCP and ASCII protocols with our ICP-DAS heart converters. This makes it easy to integrate with SCADA software for easy access of real-time status of your machine. Here is an overview of the heart products we offer. We have converters, gateways, and IO modules that support heart protocols. The ones in red will be released soon. Here are some of our most popular heart communication gateways that convert heart network to other protocols. The Heart 710 is a Modbus RTU to heart gateway, communicable over RS-232, RS-485, and RS-422, supporting operating temperatures of uh, minus 25 degrees Celsius and 75 degrees Celsius and has a DIN rail mount. It functions as the master on the heart network. It allows the Modbus master to access heart devices on heart networks. It provides a software utility for conferring the heart 710 and mapping the heart data to Modbus registers. Once the heart 710 is properly configured, it will make your heart data easily readable in your Modbus network. Here's a diagram that shows an application for the Heart 710. On the right side, the Heart 710 can be connected with heart devices. The heart devices may be tr a transmitter, an actuator, a flow meter, or a similar device that communicates over heart protocol. On the other side, Heart 710 can be connected with similar devices that communicates over um, so that's like a host PC, HMI device, or PLCs with master devices. This application illustrates how the Heart 710 is used to convert heart data from the modules on the right to Modbus data that can be read in from Modbus master device. We provide a free and easy to use utility for the Heart 710. It can read and write heart data by heart command and provide diagnostic information. It can also auto-scan all heart devices connected and show the device information within a user-friendly interface. Based on the success of the Heart 710, we also developed a similar product, the Heart 711, which converts heart data to Modbus TCP. The Heart 711 is a Modbus TCP to heart gateway. It is communi communicable over Modbus TCP, heart, and RS-232. It allows the Modbus TCP master device to access the data from the heart slave devices. We also provide a free utility software for the Heart 711, which has similar user interface and allows users to easily configure the Heart device. The i7570 is a serial to heart converter designed to be a master device of heart devices. It allows users to access the heart slave by using RS-232, RS-422, RS-485. In addition, we also provide the utility tool for users to configure the i7570. Besides serial interface, we also provide converters with USB interface. The i7567 is a USB to heart converter designed to be the master device of heart devices. It allows users to access the heart slave via USB connection. It in addition, we also provide the utility for, um, for user configuration for the i7567. And here's a screenshot of the free utility software we provide for the i7567. It provides for easy configuration um, and also the ability to data log. Our modules also allow for easy integration with OPC servers. We also provide FDT DTM support for our heart devices. And here is a gas pipeline pressure monitor monitoring application with our heart devices. Uh, one of our customers in oil and gas industry is constructing many gas stations. The pipelines transport decompressed uh, natural gas to each station. They require a system that can help them detect the gas pressures in the pipelines at every gas station. The biggest challenge facing our customer is how to strictly control the gas pressure in the transportation pipelines. 
based on the information our customers provided, we came up with a solution that allows our customers to easily monitor the gas pressure in all pipelines in their control center. We suggest the customer use our um, XPAC 800 as an 8,000 programmable automation controller that runs Indusoft SCADA software. It, and, and then we implement the logic controls and I87H17W, and it's the eight channel heart current input module to gather the information from the heart sensors. Another feature of the heart protocol is its interoperability. The heart protocol allows two masters, primary and secondary, to communicate with slave devices and provide additional operational flexibility. A permanently connected host system can be used simultaneously while um, a handheld terminal or a PC controller is communicating with a field device. The heart protocol ensures interoperability among, de among devices through universal commands that enables hosts to easily access and communicate the most common parameters using um, using uh, used in the field devices. DDL enables a single handheld configuration or PC host application to configure and maintain heart communicating devices from any manufacturer. It minimizes the amount of equipment and training needed to maintain a plant. Now let's take a look at some of the Modbus protocol converters, which might you, which you might need in our. Um, in your Modbus applications. We offer converters from Modbus to BACnet, CAN, HART, uh, Profibus, and much more. Uh, and then also the TGW700 series is a Modbus TCP to RTU ASCII gateway that enables a Modbus TCP host to communicate with uh, serial Modbus RTU devices through Ethernet network. Um, and this eliminates the cable length limitations of legacy serial communication devices. All right, so now I will pass the presentation over to Robert. He will go over how to configure um, uh, Heart 710 using the utility to communicate Modbus for uh, SCADA. Okay, hello all. Thank you, Lucy. Um, let's see, today I will show you uh, how to use the Heart 710 utility. The Heart 711 uses a very similar utility, so you'll follow very similar steps to uh, configure the Heart 711 as well. Okay, the first thing I want to do is introduce you to the HG utility. This is the utility for configuring and troubleshooting the Heart 710 module. It's a free software that we offer that specifically works for the Heart 710. For the Heart 711, it'll be a different utility, but it's very similar in nature. Uh, the first thing you want to do is uh, connect to the module. So you click on communication settings as shown in the red, and you select your uh, COM port number. Um, right now I'm connected by RS-232, but you can also con connect by RS-422 or RS-485. Uh, you select the default baud rate, parity, uh, Modbus RTU, and uh, everything is shown here. And then once you connect to the module, you are able to change these uh, after the fact for next time. Um, let's see, so once you do that, you click on the connect button as shown here, and you want to look for the green light in the upper left-hand corner. This shows connectivity. If you don't see a green light, you probably have either a communication setting error or maybe a wiring issue. Um, let's see, from this window, you can see that we have uh, many different categories. Once connected, you can click on device information, device configuration, address map, device diagnostic, and a few others that I rarely use. But uh, for the most part, device information, device diagnostic, and device configuration are the main ones I use. I'll show you some screenshots in a minute. OK, first of all, for device information, I'll see this gives you an overview of your network, or I'm sorry, your heart system in the beginning. Uh, notice that heart device zero is shown on the left side. Uh, let's see, by right-clicking on default command three or any of the commands in this window, you can read the values. So for instance, uh, this will help you verify connectivity to your device and verify the values you're reading are correct and consistent with what you're seeing in, in your 
uh, on your device that there's a, a screen or something. Okay, uh, the next window is the device configuration. From here you right click on the system and you can add a module or edit its properties. Uh, you can edit the baud rate, the parity, uh, see the Modbus address and read uh, some values. Let's see, device configuration window. You can also use this to edit and add commands. Say for instance you want to add something besides the command 3. Command 3 and command 1 I believe are always defaulted so that you can always do it. But you can also add uh, user defined commands and edit the properties for each specific command or each specific device simply by right clicking. Uh, once you've added a command, as shown in this example, I added a user command 138 and the user command 3. Uh, when I click on the user command 3 in this window, it shows you uh, where you'll find it in the Modbus address table. Since these are user defined commands, they're not predefined locations, but uh, you can use this map to figure out where in memory that you have to access to uh, pull those values up in your SCADA system. The values in the HART 710 are float numbers. Uh, let's see, once you have added these user-defined registers, and or if you just choose to use command 3, then I will show you later on in the presentation how to configure the module to read those data in SCADA and via Modbus RTU in this case, but like I said, TCP is similar to this. You just need a HART 711 and the similar utility. Uh, the device diagnostic window, uh, you can use this to verify uh, commands are being sent as well. Uh, you can see if a command, for instance, is invalid or not you know, being able to be read to your device, while also viewing the status of each individual device in your network. And you can also record errors uh, by pushing the record buttons at the bottom. Let's see, you can verify individual command status. Uh, you can also use through mode if you want to, say, test a command or do some di diagnostics or configuration of your device. Uh, not normally done through uh, standard commands. You can just send individual uh, commands using this window. This is again from the utility. Let me go back there and show you a screenshot again so that let's see if it goes here. Yeah, let's see what I'm talking about are these individual things. So for device diagnostic that would be this window here. Okay, let me go forward. Okay, this is back to through mode. Uh, now I'm gonna oops. Now I'm gonna show you how to read command three data. This is a a cutout from our uh, Heart 710 uh, Modbus address table. Uh, notice uh, 1300. Uh, this is uh, these are three X registers, and also the d data sometimes available in four X registers. Uh, so our address is three uh, X 1300. That's what we want to read for reading the value from command three, and we'll show you the individual values in a few minutes. Okay, the first thing you need to do is you need to do a little bit of configuration and manipulation of the data to be able to be read in SCADA in standard format. So the first thing you want to do is go into the device configuration window, uh, click on system, then right click on system and click on edit. Uh, so you want to enable the uh, swap mode word and byte so that uh, the float number can be displayed correctly and read correctly. Uh, from there you want to click OK and then you click on Save to save this uh, to the module. And you can uh, use Modpole, Modscan, or many other free SCADA, uh, or I'm sorry, Modbus simulation tools, or you can connect directly to your SCADA. I just wanted to show you these screens so that you can see using standard Modbus communication that you can pull the data from the Heart 710 that you just configured. Uh, notice I have 1301. Uh, this utility does require an offset of one. So for instance, if it says 1300, you want to put 1301 as the start address. So you just add one. Uh, the length, uh, by default, I guess we just put 10, but it'll give you 10 register values. 
and let's see, this is again the Modbus register table. So 1300 goes to 1301, and you just uh, put whatever length you need to make sure it's an even number in this case. And let's see, the display data is in float format, so you uh, need to uh, configure that in ModPole in this case. And you can read the current value, the present, or the current value, the primary value, the secondary value, the tertiary variable, and the fourth variable. <laughs> okay, and let's see, notice it is in float format, and it's shown here. This is what uh, is the predecessor to connecting to SCADA. The next thing you need to do, or once you've done this, you can verify that your module is configured correctly and you're reading your data properly. Then you incorporate this into your SCADA using a standard Modbus TCP uh, connection. If you want to, say, read a test value into your SCADA to verify if you don't have any modules connect or any heart devices connected, you can do something similar here as well. Uh, by default, a register 1100 uh, just gives you the module part number. So in this case, the 4148 converts to the hexadecimal equivalent of the ASCII text heart 710, as shown here. And then uh, registers uh, 1102, but it's shown here as 1103, uh, will give you a string that will show you heart 710 in hexadecimal format. And let's see, from there, if we go back to uh, your SCADA software, again, you select Modbus RTU and use the exact same configuration that was shown here. And you can pull those uh, command three or user-defined commands into your SCADA to uh, display the values in uh, a nice picture or graphical format. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Okay, Please feel free. The, okay, go ahead. I'll pass it back to Lucy to finish up. Okay. Thank you so much, Robert. And if you have any questions, um, just please feel free to put it into the chat box. Um, I'm actually going to go over some of the benefits of using ICP DAS products in our services. So why choose ICP DAS USA? Some of our company benefits include customized product and OEM capabilities. We have low lead times and give you that personalized care. We provide industrial products at a competitive price and we keep up with the latest technology. We offer free technical support and offer a wide variety of modul modular solutions that may that may meet like many different kinds of application requirements that you or your customer may have. So once again, just please feel free to enter your questions into the chat box. Um, and I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to type those in if you have any. Okay, if, uh, also, if you do have questions later on that come up or need to discuss any applications uh, with us, feel free to contact us at our phone number or email us. Um, and thank you for attending our webinar. Please uh, follow us on Twitter and our other social media platforms to stay up to date. And you have a wonderful weekend.